indicate. We don't look at indications of logarithmic functions, even though that there are there are many. And a lot of how many of you are from California? Yeah, so you hear about applications of logarithmic functions on a regular basis because that Richter scale is a logarithmic scale. So they apply logarithmic functions to determine the um, the magnitudes of the <coughs> earthquakes that happen in California all the time. They don't have one a year. We, on the other hand, are going to only look at growth and decay. So we're going to look at growth of populations and decay related to radioactive decay of various things. So we're just going to look at various models. They're all word problems, bad news. Here's an example of growth. Find the time required for an investment of 5,000 to grow to 6,800 and an interest rate of 7.5% compounded quarterly. That's growth. How do I find this? What formula do I use for this? That's the one. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T. All right, what pieces of this formula do I have? Uh, nope, I don't need the difference here. I have the principal, which is 5,000. There's no place in here for difference. So principal is 5,000. A is 6,800. That's how much I'm supposed to end with. I have 1 plus, because that's always there, which is 0.075. Okay, do I have N? 4, because I'm compounding quarterly. That's 4 times a year. So that's 4. That means if I'm going to solve for something, that must be T, because that's the only thing I don't have. All right, how do I solve for T here? Now let me warn you about something, because some of you ran into this um, in your written work that you turned in. Problems like this, you should not round until the final answer. Because if you round along the way, exponential functions grow fast enough that that can really make your error big. And you'll find that out in these problems really quick. So what's the first step to solving this? Divide both, both sides by 5,000. Because I don't want to write all those zeros, I'll make it 68 over 50. These two zeros and those two zeros become one. So then I have 1 plus 0 0.075 divided by 4 to the 4 times t. Now what? Okay. Why? Would you switch it now? Sure, I'd switch it now. I can figure out what that is later. When the time comes, I'll deal with it. Switch to what? Uh, log. Okay. Base what? Base whatever what's in the parentheses. Yeah, this mess in the parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.075 over 4. Okay. Of what? Of 68 over 50. And what's that equal to? 4, t. 4 times t. And then last but not least, okay, it's not really last, but it's close to last for here. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. So I'll have log of this mess, 1 plus 0 0.075 over 4 of 68 over 50. All of that's divided by 4 is equal to t. Now, I need to actually put a number into web work for this. How do I put this into web work? Can't plug it in yet. Yeah, change a base formula is going to let me plug it into my calculator to get an answer for web work. So I can do log of 68 over 50. By the way, he's having me change to base 10, just so you are all aware that's what he decided to do. Log of 1 plus 0 0.075 over 4, and then all of that is divided by 4. That I can put into my calculator and come up with an answer. I'll find out what it is. 
See, this way I didn't have to plug that thing in more than once. I always wait to the end to pull out the calculator. So let's see, I have log of. Right. So I like uh, test if you're going to put you change the base, you have to write that step out, you can't make sure as you plug it in. No, you have to write to me how you did it. Personally, on a test, I wouldn't bother for most of the time. Because you, you, you could actually, on a test, I'd let you leave it like this, because it's a nice exact answer. Oh, so, you mean plug so you wouldn't even have to change the base, so oh. plug it in. A lot of the tests, I try to avoid making you do anything like that. And so for web work, by the way, web work would let you type it in like this too, but if you wanted to, you don't have to plug it into your calculator to get your web work answer. So that would be 4.13811. That's good enough. Four to five decimal places for web work works. And honestly, I think I'd actually go up to one two because one one was rounding down. And 1, 2 guarantees that I get to the 6,800 that I was supposed to end at. The 1, 1 would have meant I was slightly shy, but not by probably very much. At least that far out in decimals. Okay, that's the ickiest one. Because it has that annoying base of whatever 1 plus 0 0.075 divided by 4 is. Here, we have a population of a certain city, and it was... 292,000 in 1988, 98, excuse me, and the relative growth rate is 2% per year. Now, unlike this problem where there's a set formula and we just plugged into the formula, we're kind of going to do that for our growth rate, but we have to figure out what formula we want to use and what goes in where. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find a function that models the growth rate of this city. Any suggestions? Well, let me ask you a question. We basically have two functions that we know of that model growth. This one models discrete growth, and then we have the PERC formula that models continuous growth. What do you think people are? Do you think we just pop out a new bunch of people every quarter? You think not? Continuous, there's people being born constantly. So yeah, population is reasonable to think of it in terms of continuous growth. So that means we're going to use A equals P, E to the R, T. Now, in terms of money, what was P? The principal or the amount of money I started with. So in terms of people, what do you think P ought to be? What population? Why 292,000? Is that really where I'm starting? Is that really where I'm starting? Yeah, in reality, I would be starting at zero. So I can't just say, I'm going to put 292 in there and keep going. I have to put in this little caveat, which will allow me to plug in the 292,000. Let 1998 represent t equals zero. And then we're going to count years since 1998. So once I put this in, then I can do what Chris wants to and put in my a equals 292,000 times E, what's R in my problem? 0 0.02, because the relative growth rate is R, and I changed it to a decimal, so 2% becomes 0 0.02. And then in my model, I'm going to still have time. So I will need, when I actually write a model, I fill in for P, I fill in for R, but I leave T and A open so that I can plug in things for time and get out populations. All right, that one was easy. Find the projected population in the year 2004. Oh, by the way, before I get to that, why does it not make sense for me to go back to the year zero for this and figure out what the population was back then? Because 